Hi, welcome back. I'm here with Chris Sullivan, former Super Bowl champion who played for the New England Patriots and Pittsburgh Steelers and who later became addicted to opioids and heroin. He's been sober for 10 years, and Chris wrote me a letter asking if I could help him find happiness and contentment. He's here with his wife, Kathy. And in listening to the two of you, it's very clear that you are dealing with a whole host of issues. It's like having a mental health casserole, okay? <laughs> and so I want to pull out the separate issues because it's very difficult to solve something when it's all fused together. And so I love a whiteboard and I'm gonna write up the top things I'm hearing. I hear you talk about anxiety. I hear you talk about depression. I heard you talk about addiction. I heard you talk about OCD. And I heard you talk about concussions. Um, so I want to unpack these one by one. First of all, concussions. I'm not an expert in that. Mm -hmm. We're going to bring out an expert in just a minute, OK? OCD. We've done a lot of shows on OCD. And one of the things that I know about OCD is that the one thing that helps other than working with somebody who is a licensed professional is exposure therapy. So forcing yourself to put on the shorts instead of wearing the socks and the sweatpants and the sweatshirt and sweating it out and punishing yourself and doing it for just 10 minutes and allowing yourself to be exposed to the discomfort and knowing that you can live with it, that's what's gonna happen with OCD. Um, addiction, one of the things that I want you to start to look into is I think that you have replaced your addiction to substances with an addiction to punishing yourself. Yes. Mm -hmm. That you beat yourself up, that you beat yourself down and now it's your new form of numbing yourself. You are not allowing yourself to feel anything. So what you did with heroin and alcohol is you beat them by having a habit of being sober. Yeah. When it comes to your addiction to punishing yourself, I want you to work on adopting a new habit. And it is a habit of celebration. Okay, here's how you're gonna do it. It's gonna sound super weird. Trust me, weird, <laughs> simple things. Okay. That's the Mel Robbins way, you All ready? Right. Okay, so are you a right-hander or a left-hander? Right. Okay, when you get up and brush your teeth, you are going to take that toothbrush and you're gonna put it in your left hand. <laughs> and as yeah. you are brushing your teeth with your left hand, you are going to be saying to yourself, I deserve to be happy. I deserve, and let me tell you why you're going to use your left hand. It's a little trick backed by science. When you use your non-dominant hand, it activates the neuropathways in your brain and your prefrontal mm. cortex because you don't normally do it that way. Yeah. So your brain is now on high alert because it's learning something new. And if you marry that with the new thought, I deserve to be happy, it encodes itself in your brain faster. Nice. And so instead of your default thinking being, why can't I open up? Why am I a bad person? Why am I such a weirdo? When am I ever gonna be this? Is that me? That's you. <laughs> two, two. <laughs> two, We're two. teaching yeah. you a new habit, which is I deserve to be happy. Right. Now I wanna right. give you some strategies around what I believe are probably the two biggest things yeah. impacting you, depression and anxiety. So first of all, depression is a disease. It is something that you can successfully live with. And there are two things that people with depression do that make the depression feel even harder to deal with. The first is you resist that you have it. So when it shows up, you add weight to it and you hate it. And so there's a level of acceptance, just like you've accepted that you had an addiction and you are living a sober life. You need to accept that this is your reality. 
And the second thing is you need to understand that depression lies to you. So the heaviness you feel, that is a real feeling, but it's a lie. You can still push yourself to go speak at a school. You can still push mm -hmm. yourself to talk to her. You can still push yourself to go to the gym. You know, you're a lineman. Mm -hmm. So could you visualize something like, you know, what are those things that you guys do where you like shove your shoulder into like one of those things and you move it down the field yeah. and... Yeah. <laughs> what is like it called? She sounds like me on the football. What is it called? Yeah. A, a blocking sled? Yes, imagine a blocking sled. And your job is to barrel through it. I All right, excellent. Finally, the anxiety. So I'm gonna give you a specific scenario. You start to worry the second she tells you you have a speaking engagement coming up. Yeah. His, okay. I won't tell him we have a speaking engagement until two days before, okay. so he doesn't worry about it. So, so I'm kind that's, of But him. here's the problem. Yeah. He's now managing you. Right. So yeah. this is an opportunity. Mm -hmm. I want you to tell him a week out. Okay. And here's how you're going to practice. Because anxiety gets worse because it gets triggered by negative thoughts, and then you start sweating, and then the sweat makes you think something terrible is going to happen, and next mm -hmm. thing you know, you're having a full-blown panic attack. Yes. Correct? That's right. How do I know this? Because I lived this yeah. for 25 years. Yeah. So you need to get a hold of your thoughts. Here's how you're going to do it. Tell me about a moment that was the most amazing moment uh, when you were speaking in front of a school for you. Oh, I had a lot. You made a big breakthrough with a kid. Do you remember what the kid was wearing? Color no, of the shirt. No, I think it was a black shirt. Okay, he's wearing a black shirt. Yeah. So imagine the kid in the black shirt, okay? I want you, when you start, when she says, oh, in a week we're going to a school, the first thought I want you to have is I'm so excited mm -hmm. because there's going to be a kid in a black shirt whose life has changed. Yeah. Yes. Yep. And here's what happens. Excitement and anxiety is the same thing in your body. You're letting your brain take it down the anxiety route. So I want you to hijack your own mind. You're not allowed to use the word, I'm anxious, when it comes to work. You're only allowed to use the word, I'm excited. 